The movie begins with William Parrish, a multimillionaire who has built a successful empire in New York for the past 40 years. However, after his wife dies, he feels empty and becomes convinced that death is now after him as well. He hears strange voices in his head that mimic his own words, but they are phony and mock him in every way possible. Alison, William's eldest and somewhat Meding daughter is planning her father's 65th birthday party. Susan, an attractive woman doctor, is dating one of Bill's board members, Drew. Her father disapproves of the relationship and advises her to find someone more compatible with her personality. She meets a handsome and cheerful stranger in a cafe early in the morning but fails to learn his name before they leave. A few minutes later, the young man is hit and killed by a car. Bill is visited by the dead stranger in his home. Bill eventually realizes that a young man represents death, but death wishes to take a break from his taxing. eternal task of transporting the souls of the dead to the afterlife he chooses william to be his guide and makes a deal with him as long as bill shows him around the mortal world bill will be alive for a little longer he finally agrees despite temporarily doubting his own sanity when susan arrives a few minutes late he is introduced to william's family at a dinner at his house she immediately recognizes the young man she met earlier that day but the young man is death who is unfamiliar with mortal men's practices and does not recall their first meeting he acts awkwardly around her and she is perplexed and upset by his sudden strange behavior which contrasts with his actions earlier that day When the dinner guest inquires about the identity of Bill's old friend, he reluctantly introduces him as Joe Black. The sudden appearance of an old friend of their father's whom they have never met perplexes the family. Joe insists on accompanying Bill everywhere he goes and Bill reluctantly agrees. Bill is aware that there are the final days on earth. But despite his best efforts he is unable to prevent events from spiraling out of control a merger has been proposed to Bill's company's board of directors and Drew actively supports the transaction but Bill as chairman vetoes it Drew is hostile to Bill's sudden new old friend and is disrespectful and rude to him Susan becomes dissatisfied with Drew's relationship, beginning to see him for who he truly is, and becomes intrigued by the seductive, mysterious Joe Black. They then make love, and she declares her love for Joe. Joe enjoys the sensations of his flesh, of human feelings and desires, and he is also in love with her. This complicates matter because Bill does not want Dad to become involved with his daughter, and informs Joe that. This was not part of their agreement. Death is unconcerned about Will's feelings and declares his intention to take Susan with him. As his final birthday approaches, Will makes one last attempt to demonstrate to Joe, particularly honesty and sacrifice. Will's 65th birthday celebration on his estate is a wonderful, picture-perfect occasion. Joe attends under the guise of an internal revenue service agent. Bill makes one last attempt to show Joe the meaning of true love and all that it means for. Joe realizes that his love for Susan requires him to sacrifice his desires to take her with him and allow her to live her life and he abandons his plans to do so. Unbeknownst to Bill, Drew is collaborating with a bill advisor. who is bidding to acquire Parrish Communications. Drew takes advantage of Bill's unusual behavior. He uses information gives to him and by Bill's son-in-law, Quinns, to persuade the board to vote Bill out of chairman. He also convinces the board of directors to approve the merger which Bill had decided to oppose. Quinns is devastated by what happens to Bill, who was voted out by all but one other member of the board. 
as an IRS agent, Joe uses his knowledge of Drew's actions and intimate Drew into resigning from the company and board of directors as well as leaving Susan. Joe assists Bill in regaining his position as chairman of the board. Bill devotes the rest of his time at the party to his daughter Allison and Susan. Joe bids Susan farewell, admitting in tone that he isn't who he appears to be. She senses something of the truth in his word, but is unable or unwilling to express it. The party concludes with fireworks display and Joe leads Bill to the edge of the garden. While Susan follows, Joe leads Bill across the bridge and the two vanish. Susan runs up to the bridge when she notices them walking away. Joe reappears and walks back over the bridge, which surprises her. Bill is no longer alive. Joe has involved with the young man Susan met at the coffee shop at the beginning of the movie. The young man speaks to Susan unaware of the events that occurred between the time of his death and his return. Susan realizes after a few moments that Joe is not a person she fell in love with. She realizes with sadness that Joe, the death, has left and that she is now conversing with Joe. She looks over Joe's shoulder to where she saw Joe and Bill. I wish you could have known my father, she sobs to Joe. What do we do now, she then asks. It will come to us, he says. She agrees with a nod. They walk back towards the memorial service for Bill, holding hands. And this is where the movie comes to an end. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let us know in the comment section below which movie you want us to recap next. As always, until the next time.